Getting your first Aussie is a very exciting moment, but you can feel overwhelmed quickly and you might feel a little lost at times. You might be asking yourself, when should I start training my puppy? What should I train first? Why are they acting crazy all of a sudden? Well, don't worry. In this video, we're going to be going over all the things that you need to be focusing on within the first week of bringing your puppy home. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I own two Australian Shepherds. I have the OG Winston, who's a little bit older than a year old. And now we have Bella, who we just picked up a few weeks ago. This channel primarily focuses on tips and tricks on raising Australian Shepherds. So if you find this useful, consider subscribing. When I brought Winston and Bella home, they were a little out of it because of the traveling. Winston had puked and peed everywhere and was a little scared, and Bella was very shy and scared. Your puppy will most likely be scared and confused, but don't worry about it, this is normal. You're literally taking them away from everything that they know. So on the first day, we like to take it nice and easy. We started off in the backyard since it was a nice hot summer day, and I allowed them to wander around. Now, every time they would approach me, I would reward them with praise and affection. Once we were done with outside, we did the same exact thing indoors. So in other words, training starts immediately. I'm showing them that good things happen around me. The first thing you want to solidify is a bond. You want to show them that everything good comes through you, whether that's praise or that's food or even security. At this time, don't worry about teaching them commands or worry about them jumping all over you. In fact, I would say invite them to jump on you and get in close. Show them that you're not scary, that you're fun, and that you are the best. Will we allow this forever? Absolutely not, but we're still in the bonding phase of the relationship, so enjoy your time with your puppy. During this time, find out what they like and what they don't like. Offer them treats and take notes which ones they like the most. By doing so, you could then create a tier list of treats so when you want to start training them, you can reward them based on the actions that they do. Also, find out what kind of toys that they like and how they like to play. This is an important one. Getting your puppy to follow your lead while using food will help you in the long run when you're trying to train them. Not only will it help them keep their focus on you in busy environments, but it will help you teach them new commands and it will help them gain control of their body. Keep in mind when you're trying to teach them anything new, always start inside of your home before taking it outside. Once you're having great success indoors, that's when you can take it outside. So the first two words that you want to load up with your puppy are their name and the word yes. Now you're only going to be using their name when you want their attention. Don't poison it by overusing it or using it in a negative way. Now the word yes is going to be implemented into training and what that word basically means is that food is going to be on the way. So the way that we teach this is at first you're going to use some food and then you're going to say the name or the word yes and then present the food. So it's going to look something like this. Bella. Good girl. And the same thing with the word yes. So, yes. And then you present food. And eventually you're going to get to the point where, Bella, good girl, mama. They're just going to know it. This is probably the most important topic of this video. If you were to tell me that you only have enough time to train two things in a day, these would be it. I believe that crate training and pottying outside is mandatory. So the way that you want to approach this is you have to create a schedule for your puppy. Now, believe it or not, puppies between the ages of eight weeks to 13 weeks old need to be sleeping about 18 to 20 hours a day. Obviously, you have to take potty breaks into consideration. So the rule of thumb is however months old your puppy is, they can hold it for one hour. So let's say if your puppy is two months old, they could hold it for two hours. Or if they're three months old, they could hold it for three hours. What I suggest doing is actually taking them out before that time is up. So let's say your puppy is two months old, I would take them out every hour and a half just until I can actually gauge their bladder control. Keep in mind that sometimes a potty break will just be a potty break. You're gonna take them out and then just put them right back inside the crate. Obviously take into consideration that they will need some play time, but for the most part, all you're gonna be doing is taking them potty and then putting them right back inside the crate. If you don't make a crate schedule for your puppy, what will end up happening is that they'll become cranky and this comes in the form of nipping and just chaoticness. This is their way of telling you that they need to go to sleep. Now you may interpret this as they need to play some more, but this is totally wrong. They just need sleep. So the big takeaway here is that your puppy probably needs more sleep than you're actually giving them. Now it's gonna be a pain in the ass crate training them. This is probably the most annoying process in raising a puppy, but I'm telling you this is going to be so beneficial for you because not only is it going to teach them how to control their bladder because they usually don't like to pee or poo inside their crate, but it'll teach them calmness. 
This is a huge topic and it's very broad, but I'll try to condense everything into this video. So socialization and desensitization is not allowing your dogs to meet people and meet strange dogs, right? It is just allowing them to take in their surroundings and then you reward your puppy for when they engage with you, not when they engage with other people. So if you allow your puppy to meet random dogs and strangers, what you're doing is you're increasing the risk of them becoming reactive when they're older. And trust me, you do not want a reactive dog. I know there's gonna be people in the comments saying you shouldn't allow your puppy out in fields or in stores if they're not fully vaccinated because there is a risk of them catching something. And to be fair, yes, there is that risk. But in my opinion, the risk is heavily outweighed by the reward, which is allowing them to socialize and desensitize to the world. The sooner that you start this, the better chances of you are gonna have a more neutral dog when they're older. Just have to be smart of where you're bringing your puppy. Don't go to fields where there's a bunch of dogs that go through it and there's poo and there's pee everywhere because they will most likely catch something. Just bring them to somewhere that's a bit more secluded. Also, if you are feeling a little uneasy about this, you can always just hold them and just bring them around places. Just so they can socialize and desensitize. One of my most favorite things that I like to do with Bella is to take her to pet friendly stores. So over here, we're just in our local Canadian tire. And for the most part, I'm allowing her to do whatever she wants to. I want her to take in the surroundings. I actually want her to be exploring. And the more that she explores, the more confident she becomes. Every now and again, I will call her name and give her some treats. But for the most part, I'm allowing her to do her own thing. Now you're gonna see me be an idiot a couple times where I just kind of run into some shelves and she does get scared. But what I think is really important is that she's not running away. To me, that means that she's feeling secure around us. Every now and again, I'll throw in some commands just to see if she'll be able to listen to them because Bella does not have a lot of confidence. And this is something that we have been working on since day one. So the reason why this is such a broad topic is because of the desensitization aspect of things. It doesn't just stop at you bringing them out into the world. You're also gonna have to desensitize them to brushing their fur and clipping their nails, to doorbells, to holding the collar. The list goes on and on and on. And this is something you're gonna be working on for the rest of their life. Thank you guys so much for watching the video if there's any topics that you want me to hit like crate training or teaching them place or anything like that let me know in the comments below i hope you enjoyed and don't forget to like and subscribe yes good <laughs> sit. Hey, hey, can you guys find that? Listen, sit. Sit. Uh, you, you're recording? Mm -hmm. Sit. Down. Yes. <laughs>